we're ready to start building visuals. And before we actually take a look at that very first one, that first mouse click, how do we do it? We want to answer ourselves one question. So we're going to put data prep and data transformation beside, you know, behind us for now. And we're going to ask the question, what makes a good visual? Almost every visualization course I've ever seen starts here with a very famous set of graphs. Now you may have never seen them before, so let me introduce them to you. This is what is very famously called Anscombe's Quartet. And if you don't know who Francis Anscombe is, that's okay. That's a good name to get into your, your talking vocabulary there because he's a very important person in our understanding of visualizations. Francis Anscombe was a statistician back in the early 1970s. And he was often ridiculed by his peers for emphasizing the graphing or the charting of data more so than the serious number crunching. Because back in, in his day, numbers were considered um, rigorous and strict and graphing was considered loose and um, not terribly exact. Well, he knew that they were wrong, and so he set out to prove it. And so what he did is he, he uh, put together four sets of numbers, paired numbers, four completely different sets of numbers. And then he would do descriptive analysis, descriptive statistics right over the top. And they would yield essentially the same results. And so you would think, well, this is foolish looking. He did the same math four times in a row but he didn't. He did the same math across four different sets of numbers that produced essentially the same numeric results. He then turned around and graphed those sets of numbers, and that's what you're seeing on my slide. And you can see that my slide with these four graphs, the graphs tell a far different story than numeric analysis that says the exact same thing. And this proved his point. This proved the point that sometimes you really do need to take a look at the visualizations because they may show you something that the data all by itself never will. Now to the place that when we're training data analysts, we say to them, do the visuals first, then do the number crunching again, make your corrections and your adjustments, and then go back and do the visualization one more time. But even if you don't need to do that type of intense math, the goal is the same. The goal is make sure that the visualization you pick tells me something about the data that the numbers all by themselves could never tell me. Very often in some of our earlier courses, especially our Excel courses, you know, Microsoft made it so easy to go trick-or-treating through the chart gallery. And people will always say things well, like, I'll never need a radar chart, or I'll never need a funnel chart, or I'll never need a sunburst chart. And I always think, well, how do you know? Do you know what they do? Do you know what they can show me about your data that the numbers can't? Right, so now we head down this path of data visualization. So from this moment going forward, nothing is off limits. We examine every type of visual so that we can determine if it's gonna help us in our understanding of our data or not.